Welcome to this week's very special program of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. We're filming here at the 2019 San Francisco Dickens Fair. I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. Stacy Kennedy. And before we begin, I have to ask, Will, what's with your shirt today? I'm glad you asked. Since this is a Christmas fair, I wore my Christmas sweater. It, to, it, it seems so festive. I, I'm, thought I'm, I thought I might blend, blend, in, blend in with the theme. Excellent. So what we'll be doing today, folks, is interviewing a number of the actors within the Dickens Fair, some perhaps within character, some perhaps not. There's an organization within the Dickens Fair called the Order of the Golden Needle, whose members are people on the autistic spectrum. And so we'd like to find out their perspective. I'm now very pleased to be speaking with Mr. Benny Schuster, who's going to be telling us about the Order of the Golden Needle. Benny, can you tell us about the order itself? Oh, sure. Thanks. Sir. So the Order of the Golden Idol is an organization that got started in London a couple of years back to help those of us who have brains who are wired differently than others get together, make friends, and cope with London, which can sometimes be a bit of a challenging spice for a lot of us. You know, what with the crowds and the noise and the smells and all that, it can be a lot to deal with. And for a lot of us, it's especially hard to deal with. So being able to get together with other people who understand what it's like allows us to work together to figure out ways to make sure that we're all happy and having a good time. Because the holiday season is all about having fun and being with people you love and people that you're close with. So we get together and we make friends and we get through London together. And it's really, really nice. Excellent. So it is a very uh, noisy town and dirty and crowded London is. So, so how do you and the members of the order best deal with that since it can be very distressing? Well, the thing is, different members of the order have different nights. And so a large part of it is every individual member figuring out what they need and then coming sometimes to their friends or other members of the order to figure out how to deal with it best. For example, I'm not good with sudden loud noises. It really, really does me bad. So, oftentimes, I will get me mites in the order to let me know when the parades are coming by and things like that, so that I know when the big noises are coming and I can move out of the way. Some people have difficulties with crowds. Some people don't like the smells. Some people need to know where they can go to get away from people and have a quiet spot to themselves. And these are all kinds of information and advocacy what members of the order do for one another. So tell me, um, what this time of year in London, um, what is it do you look most forward to? I most look forward to the dancing. Dance is my um, special interest. So I get inordinately happy when Christmas comes and I know that at my father's warehouse we'll clear away all the furniture and on that lovely wood floor we have what well, the band will strike up and we'll just dance for hours and hours all night long. Wonderful. What is it at your father's warehouse uh, are you most helpful with? Well, um, I learned to um, teach and call the dancers. So I help organize um, the sets of dancers, and then I teach them to the customers um, and the patrons that come in. And, um, oh goodness. Um, and then, you know, for things like the waltz and the polka that are couples dancers, if, if somebody come, were to come into the warehouse and not know how to do that, I could teach them how to do it on the fly and then and dance that with them. But, yes, that, that's... That's my function there, it's to keep everything organized and make sure everyone's happy and that there aren't collisions and that well, if it's a pattern dance, I teach the pattern and then I prompt it as they dance. And now I'll be speaking with Reverend Palmer and his delightful trouble, Fanny. You got the Cockney rhyming slang right. <laughs> yeah, he knows it. That's trouble true. and wife is your wife. That's my wife, yeah. It's true, isn't it? The Reverend. Yeah. life here. Tell us about what you do in London. Sure, yeah. We live down on the docks, which is the bad end of town. I, of course, am the uh, the reverend down there, of course, for the downtrodden and the poor and the sickly. 
you know, them what's won't have anybody else look out for them. So I preach to them and tell them about forgiveness and, of course, the important lessons in the Bible like eat the rich. Because they say stay rich, that means they get more food, so they're fattier, which means that if you cook them real well, slow, not, they're not delicious. Quite literally, Fanny, not eat the rich. Oh. It's more like consume their resources. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they don't know how to share, and that's rude. That's right. Redistribution of wealth, as it were, yeah. like it says in the Bible. Mm -hmm. That's in the Bible. It's says true. You have to share. It's true. You got to share. He uses his, his show, his sermon, every Sunday to help advocate for the poor and the downtrodden and also to advocate for the Order of the Golden Needle. I'm very proud of him. That's true. That I do. I always mention the Golden Needles right at the beginning of the show because, of course, they does help us and we helps them. Mm -hmm. What can you tell us about the Order? Uh, well, the Order has been instrumental in getting together and really solidifying what our needs are. Uh, you see, there's a lot of different needs from individual autistic folks and neurodivergent folks. Some need the quiet, some need the dark. And uh, in organizing, we are able to better lobby management for accommodations and for things that a lot of us can use, yeah? So it was very important for me to, to uh, let the general public know that we exist so as that we might get more recognition. Especially what, because really half the people at this fair and in London are neurodivergent. What, because not you, not, not no, neurotypical people don't generally dress up in funny clothing, learn how to speak in a different accent, and learn an entire different manner of behavior for eight weekends every year. So it, you might say this is a bit of a special interest for many of us. I would say that is accurate. It is a special interest indeed. So we, since the order opened up to more neurodivergent folk rather than just people on the autism spectrum, it can advocate for a larger group of people at the fair, which is extremely helpful. We are also looking into advocating for visitors to London who might have special needs. Say if someone has a meltdown and they're just visiting, but they're not allowed to go backstage because they don't work here. We're trying to find ways that we can accommodate for them and bring them into an area what is safe for them, where they can help calm down. It's true, it's true. Now, one part of my sermons, if you hasn't seen it, is it seems very improv, it seems off the cuff, yeah but every word on there is very well scripted because I, I panic if I is put on the spot, if I have to improvise, if my routine is changed. And the, the needle, I would say, has been instrumental in helping me feel comfortable and that that doesn't make anything wrong with me, that if I need to read right from a script, that's just what I need help with and that's perfectly fine. And people loves you. Thank people you. loves you so much. Well, thank you, Penny. Of course, she's not biased in the slightest. No! What? I'm not like I'm in love with you or married uh, you or nothing. No, <laughs> none of that, none of that. Now, there are those that say that the Order is actually a secret Chartist organization opposing <laughs> the government and should be banned. What do you say to them? Well, I think anything that should be banned is probably pretty interesting, yeah. that's for sure. What is they trying to suppress? That's what I want to know. Maybe we is all powerful, and if we get together and collectively lobby, they can have to listen to us. Oh no! Oh, I mean, never, no, it's, it's no, no, a secret. no, 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 no. It's a secret. It's a secret. We're proper. We're proper. Most proper indeed. Are there any additional things you and the missus would like to add? I would, I would just like to say that recognition and word of mouth are the things that make us powerful. Speaking about it instead of being quiet about it. It ain't no secret organization. We want to broadcast it loudly from the roofs. We are whole inclusive and we want your support so we can support you. Also, I think it's very important that the orders here, especially to show that we've always been here. This ain't nothing new. 
there's always been people on the spectrum. There's always been neurodivergent people. It's just we was usually treated poor in the past. We was usually relegated to the back corners of the room where no one had to think about us. Oh, Jimmy Jimmy doesn't talk, but he's yeah. really good with the horses. Yeah, so they're these valuable members of society who's always been around. And now we all get representation, isn't that right? One final question. Have you or any of the other members of the order reached out to other reenacting organizations to see if they're doing things similar to what you're doing or be interested in your help? Uh, okay. No, you go ahead. I guess it's me. Uh, I, we do a few other reenactment events, um, but there, there is no n group of needles there. That is, there is not, this is unique. This is something that we're trying to build critical mass for. And in fact, uh, next year, I don't know if they've talked to you about it at all, We's pushing really hard for at least this fair to have a uh, basically a de-stim day, a, um, a, a sensory day, where the lights is on, there's not as much sound, there's, uh, the shows are quieter. But as far as other groups, this is rather unique. Uh, there aren't many that I am aware of. Uh, the other big one, there's the Northern California Renaissance Fair. We're part of that and uh, I would very much like for them to follow suit. Hi, my name's Ari Ovell. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, Chris Wolf's romberger he, him. Uh, Joe Sinelli, uh, he's, he's, him, it's fine. <laughs> Christy Taylor Zolo, I go by she, her. Yep. <laughs> and I'm Cassini Mobley, and I use she, her pronouns. All right, cool. Excellent. So first of all, how did you originally get involved in this? Well, it was a funny thing. I want to say that four years ago, 2016 was the year, right? Yes. Yeah, that was the year I was out. So, okay, so 2016, uh, about six of us who realized at a certain point, hey, we're all autistic and we hang out a lot. What if we made that like a thing? What if we got all the neurodivergent people to kind of just hang out together so that we can be buddies? Uh, and we wanted to give it a fancy name because there's no polite period term for neurodivergent or autistic or any of those terms. Yeah. So don't Can I jump in really yeah. quickly? Mm -hmm. So the other thing is that as we were talking, we were kind of acknowledging to one another for the first time, like sensory problems um, and social problems that we had in this very intense immersive live theater event that we all do on the energy of our special interests that intersect here. But like, let's be real. It's sensory hell. How do you, how, what are we doing to avoid meltdowns? You know, we're kind of sharing resources as well. Not just like, it's not just a friendship group. It's also like a really talking to each other about the real challenges of, of what it's like being here. Mm -hmm. And, oh, do you want me to talk about how we came up with the name? Yeah, that, that I think would be a fun thing to bring up. So. The reason we are the Order of the Golden Eel is that as the six of us were sitting around talking about autistic life at Dickens Fair, there was someone who was working a piece of embroidery and she had um, a needle that was gold colored and she was saying, yeah, it's my, my, all my embroidery needles are gold colored to help differentiate them for the regular sewing needles. And we thought, what a great metaphor for autism. It's not that it's, we're different. But we have a di it's because we serve a different function than neurotypical. We have different strengths, just the same way an embroidery needle is different from a sewing needle while still being a needle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's, um, oh yeah, and then we have the, our crest. Hey. Do you want to talk about the crest story? Sure, I'll talk us through the crest. So I'll show off mine. We're still wait waiting on getting the next batch for folks who are just starting, but um, this is what our crest looks like, just kind of talking us through. There's the golden needle itself, which Cassie and he just explained. Um, there is the wolf because of the pack mentality in the sense that, much like wolves, we are both social and solitary in that we can sometimes want to be on our own and also value community time, and those two don't cancel each other out. Then there's the owl for the inherent wisdom of neurodivergence and the fact that there is a lot of shared knowledge, especially when we pull it together in a community context like this. Um, there are the four stars, which the number four is not significant beyond its aesthetic appeal, but it's the idea that just as there are many stars in the sky, there are many different ways to be neurodivergent and they are all equally valid and worthwhile and worthy of representation. And we also thought of the guiding star mentality to have stars on there. Precisely. And then our motto is communitas mentum, which is a community of minds, which kind of speaks for itself. 
And yes, we acknowledge it looks very much like the Hogwarts crest, and we kind of into that too. <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of times about, oh, is that a Hogwarts pin? No, no, it isn't. <laughs> Only one of the animals matches, I believe. Only one no, of the things. Nope. No, no, no. Oh, no, Raven that Claw's a Raven, not an, not an owl, right? Actually, no, it's, actually it's an eagle. eagle. It's an eagle. <laughs> it's Raven eagle. Claw's an eagle. Yeah, yeah. I know. Isn't that oh, ridiculous? And I should sure. know this because that's my house. Yeah, yeah. no, it's, a, it's an eagle. And Raven Claw all Raven Claws blue. ever have said, but ravens are actually smart birds, and eagles aren't nearly as smart, so why? But it's about, so apparently, I was just reading this recently, it's about soaring high over everything, and that's why J.K. Rowling put an eagle for the raven claw um, house animal. Cool. Nerds. So, so. Yes. 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 Do you want to throw anything in about those early days when it was just like the six of us? Like, what do you remember yeah. from that time? Well, we were all able to fit at one table. That was, <laughs> that was nice. Yeah. <laughs> Especially for tea. Oh, yeah. But I remember it being really nice is to like kind of get together with people, especially because if I recall correctly, you and your husband Josh um, in that first group were the only people not from Fezziwigs. Yes. Um, so it was nice to kind of see that, oh look, it's not just one friend group, it's actually multiple of us hanging out together. Yes, he couldn't be here, he's one of the guardsmen, so. So he's, <laughs> he's busy preparing to make loud noises. Oh yeah, his loud noise. Yeah. Make but, sure nobody uh, steps on the queen. She has a very um, delicate dress and yes. we don't want people running into her. So I think that that was, and you know, that was back in 2016. We had six members. And if somebody wants to really quickly check on Facebook, how many people are in the Facebook group right now? Yeah. I forgot Cassie, my phone. Cassie, any time. It's okay, 101. Got, you should, you should. I love to run. All righties. Um, my no fair family is going out to tea right now, so Have I'm going to... Thank you again for your thank time. You. Yes, yeah. Oh, thank you for organizing this. Mm -hmm. This is so okay. lovely. If, if I were in my other 42. character, I'd, t uh, I'd, I'd, tell to pass, I'd tell you to pass some of my good wishes Sweet. on to your sister, but Indeed. that's not. I'm not Mr. Post, so... Uh, uh, hush. <laughs> hush. So yeah, we started with six, and as of right now, I'm looking at the Facebook group, and we have some 42 members, <laughs> and that's not including the people who aren't on Facebook. And so it's really expanded, and especially this year, it's gotten a lot bigger because this is the year that we officially expanded to not just be autistic, but neurodivergent in general. And so we've been able to incorporate people with a far wider variety of neurodivergences into the conversation, which has honestly, I think, helped the organization a lot yeah. and helped enrich and diversify the conversations we're having about what neurodiversity and accessibility look like at Dickens. Who are the non uh Neurodivergent uh, people who are part of the order be what would be? not neurodivergent, then they wouldn't be members of the order. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, I used the wrong term. <laughs> who are the non uh, ASD? We have a lot of non ASD folks. We have ADHD, dyslexia. We have a couple of people with TBIs, traumatic brain injuries. Oh mm -hmm. um, if uh, uh, if you get the chance to see me with still as Fred today, the dinner dinner party I spoke of, you know, in character. Uh, it's part. It's part of a Christmas Carol. But the other, the other male guest, uh, uh, Mr. Guppy, if you see him on the streets, uh, Topper, in uh, on that stage, uh, is I think, uh, you know, I, I think is one of the. Is ADHD? The, yeah, as well. I think ADHD. But yeah, we were, we were talking about that, that you know, that yesterday, right, right before our scene, as we were talking about coming to the tea. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, my, my wife also is, is not autistic. Uh, she's neurodivergent. Um, she's got you know anxiety, depression, and I would say one of the things we're overcoming is self-gatekeeping. Yeah. We actually had a conversation about that, where it's like, well, am I really neurodivergent enough to be part of the needles? And we're like, yes, <laughs> yes, of course. If you have to ask that question, <laughs> the answer is probably <laughs> yes. Right? Do you need extra accommodation? Fancy that. That's what we've got. Well, yeah, it's not want you. It's not even do you need it, is is does it serve you? And I don't with one exception, which was last year when I when you had to hurry me out of Fezziwigs, I haven't needed any of this. But it's been useful. And the flip side of that as well is that there are a good number of neurodivergent people out there who are not members of the order just because they don't feel that that particular type of support structure would be useful to them, and that's perfectly valid as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a, a needle, la I think it was last year, it was either last year or the one before, that they were just having a meltdown, just a complete meltdown, mm -hmm. to the point that they were nonverbal, kind of like having, mm -hmm. like just mostly breathing, and I ha I'm a director over at uh, Matt Sal's, and so I have my own little backstage area, and this was before we actually had space, and uh, we had talked beforehand, like, if she has a meltdown, like, what should you do? And it's basically just gently lead her, and she needed 
quiet and dark and I just put her in my dressing room and shut the door so that yeah. she could just decompress and that's the kind of thing. Like we have a better eye for spotting when you don't have the language to express yourself. Mm -hmm. And we're all looking out for each other when you lose the ability to reach out. Yeah, one of the useful things for me is that Ian actually helped create these little cards with handwriting on them yes. where people could specify what their needs are if they go nonverbal. So like, for example, mine says, you know, if I hand this to somebody sort of, I am autistic and currently overwhelmed without touching me, please get me either to Fezziwigs or escort me outside immediately. And the thing is, is that having access to people who can help facilitate those kinds of assistive devices or helping make action plans for dealing with things has been really helpful when we have, a, we know who to turn to if we need teammates for making that kind of plan happen. And yeah, as a specific example, that was last year. So in my life, I'm a teacher. <coughs> um, or I've been substituting for several years. I don't have my credential. Last year I was, uh, I, I took on actually teaching a sixth grade class as part of, you know, as part of seeing if I was actually gonna go for my credential. Turns out that that's a lot of extra mental stress. And so last year while I was at fair one day, I was like, nope, I'm, my brain's stopping working. I can't think anymore. And it was just like, since Ari was actively in Fezziwigs and not running the streets, he was just like, help. Yeah. And it was just, okay, yank us out. You know, Ari yanked me out through, through fair. It's just like, okay, I'm following, got me. And I don't remember how long it was before I, my brain started working again, but like having access to that makes, you know, gives me the confidence to be able to do this, knowing that there are people in, you know, not just in the order, but the fact that the order makes other, makes the larger fair community aware of this, um, means that we can, you know, it's safe for me to do this. And it actually makes it safer for, uh, for the participants because when we see a, you know, not just a participant, but a guest, who is having an issue and we can say, oh wait, that's a needle. Mm -hmm. Or, and we had one last weekend, I think it was? Last weekend, yeah. Where somebody had that issue and it was like, they're not functioning, but we can talk to stage directors, is this person's a needle, they need help. Talk to the, um, to the uh, security team, it's this person's a needle, neurodivergent, they need help. And so by communicating that, by having them in on the loop, Everyone served by that. Yeah, like that, well, I forget, it was two years ago or three years ago when someone was having a meltdown and instead of being like, like helped, they got escorted out by security. Because they had thought that they were a belligerent drunk rather than someone having a meltdown who needed mm -hmm. help. And gee, fancy that, did that help that person having the meltdown? No, of it course not. Yeah. Makes it, in, it will ruin your whole day. Especially because generally neurotypicals are genuinely not aware that a person who is having a meltdown, A, is not in control of what's going on, and B, hates it as much as he hates being it as much as you hate seeing it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And they need to be told. It's like, yeah, you can't tell that it's not a belligerent drunk. You need to not make that decision. Come to us. De escalation. Yeah. And. One of the nice things that we've been doing as the order has been getting more traction is doing different educational opportunities for neurotypical people who are wanting to learn how to be better allies to needles, sort of providing some insight into, here's what it means to be neurodivergent, here are the ways this can impact at FAIR, and here are some general do's and don'ts about how to handle a situation if the needle in your life asks you for help. And sort of providing those kinds of basic sort of neurodiversity first aid type mm. knowledge essentially for people yeah. about how to manage those situations. And we also do, in addition to that workshop, we do a different version of it for directors specifically to talk about how being in management impacts the way they relate to needles. Everything from like, how do you provide feedback? How do you make sort of, how do you provide structure and resources? How do you give feedback? It's been really nice to see them taking on that knowledge and incorporating it into their practices as, as the different casts develop. Yeah, my, my director's been great for that, as, uh, from other books. Uh, mm -hmm. Therese, it's, for me, it's, if, I, if, if I need feedback, hit me with it like a brick. And she's been hitting me with bricks mm -hmm. every day about what am I doing wrong? I'm getting better, every day it's better. Mm -hmm. Every day it will be better until the end of the fair and then I'll forget everything before next year, right? And then it begins all <laughs> over, over again. again. And I think for me, one of the most important things is 
not all neurodivergent folk, but most of us are so in control of ourselves that we break ourselves trying to fit in. So for me, this isn't about us even just figuring ourselves out. It's about making sure that they give us accommodations. Yeah. It's literally like, look, this is not a choice. This is not something we're like, we're trying to be difficult. We're tr we need you, we don't want to talk to you. N no, it's literally just, this is what we need. And I know you don't understand, but it's your responsibility to, and we're trying to explain it to you. It's just gonna be our special interest and it's gonna take a long time. So you're just gonna listen. And, and sometimes we don't understand. It's exactly. Good. We're doing our best though. The best thing for me as a needle has been talking with people and oh, that thing about me that I thought was just me. Oh wait, there's other people. What worked for you? What hasn't worked for you? So I don't try that. And the nice thing is, especially through the, magic, the magical wonders of technology is that even during the off season at fair, when we're not like doing Dickens stuff, we have a we have a group, a Facebook group where we chat and we share links and we have conversations about things, and so it helps us continue to maintain that communal connection throughout the year, which is very useful then during the on season because it means we ha we actually get to know each other and we have some familiar names and faces, and we have established some kind of trust so that we can work together in these more high intensity situations, and it's little things like I remember one of our members earlier this year shared an article about how when neurotypicals ask you what are they what are you doing what they want is for you invite to invite them to join you and everyone in the group lost their minds yeah. because like what do you mean how are we supposed to know that but because we were sharing that knowledge collectively it was a chance for all of us to benefit from that experience together yeah because the social norms i, I mean so social norms are complicated in the first place but then you get out on stage where you're performing and it's sometimes such little things like an out like you need permission to just leave a gig because socially that's not acceptable you can't go i'm done talking to you goodbye and you just walk <laughs> away like that person's gonna be like ouch what did i do and it's no it was me that i needed to go but here you can say happy christmas and you just go because mm -hmm. we and we share these little tiny things that Sure, every actor needs an out so that, you know, the gig doesn't go on too long, but we sort of need to be shown things like that. You need strategies, you need, uh, you know, things that you can fall back on. And um, I actually want to pivot really quickly because I know we really wanted to talk about this in the off season, this coming up off season. We're gonna be working really hard to have a, what has been a pipe dream so far, we want to have a sensory day at Dickens Fair mm -hmm. where yeah. The lights are lower or higher, as it are, as it were. You know, sounds are lowered. Things aren't as intense. There's less a, crowds. Yeah, less crowds, because there are too few venues that even think of things like that. Because for the most part, there's a lot of autistic and neurodivergent folks who just don't come. They just don't come. There's it's just one not. downside to that, and that is, um, well, it would hurt the profits because less people would be coming. That's so, actually one part of the game yeah. plan is we want to reach out to a lot of local organizations mm -hmm. and get them to commit to buying a block of tickets. Mm -hmm. So that way it's not at a loss of revenue to the fair. Right. Plus, we already know that there are specific days during the run that are low profit for the event anyway. And that's what yes. we were planning on doing. And so, and so, so if you can, f what we're looking at is both, you know, as Ari mentioned, finding enough neurodivergent groups out in the, you know, out in the world, out, you know, it's, well, I guess really out in the Bay Area that would commit to showing up and then work with management to find, you know, what's a day that normally doesn't, you know, that doesn't, you know, that has lower popu you know, population Sunday. in London. First Sunday seems to be the yeah. lowest profit. For, for, uh, first, to yeah. do that would be to meet with uh, California Regional Centers. Mm -hmm. Say again? California Regional Centers. What's that? Uh, they are set up by the state and they they acquire the funding from the government to provide programs such oh, as independent living huh. skills, um, outings, um, group yeah. outings and such. Okay. Well folks, and for this week, this is Keith Halperin. And, and Will Burnick. And Stacey Kennedy. And Ari Ovell. Chris Wolf-Tromberger. And Joe Sinelli. We are filming from the Dickens Fair and I thank you and wish you all a happy holidays, one and all.
Happy Christmas. Best of the season. Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. (laughs) Merry Christmas.